here is my iBook G4 which I use solely for editing videos using iMovie 06 but these past few days I've wanted to have it do one other task and that is be a dedicated Skype computer because these iBooks have an incredibly high quality built-in microphone located right on the screen this iBook is running Mac OS 10.4.11 which I'm pretty sure is Mac OS X Tiger and there aren't any new versions of Skype that are made to support this in fact I believe the current version of Skype is something around 7.3 point something this is inaccurate on oldapps.com and the newest version does not run on PowerPC based Macs so I had a look around online and it turns out that there's a site that still supplies the older versions of Skype the last version of Skype that was made for iBook G4s or any PowerPC based computers was Skype version 2.8.0.866 you can actually da still download this version but there's one problem that I've run into and I'll get to that in just a moment as soon as I'm done installing it so here is the Skype installer it just mounted the disk image so I could just click this and copy it over into applications and that's essentially how we install it quite quick actually compared to the Windows installer it takes a bit longer than the Mac installer but once this is installed you're going to see exactly what we're going to run into and what many other people face when they try running Skype on an older no longer supported operating system here we are in the finder and we've gone ahead and browsed into the applications folder and if I double click this now Skype will begin running and it's going to present us with the usual username and password prompt so that we can log in and of course the license agreement where we sign away all of our rights and now I will type in my username and password and we will, we will see exactly what is the problem I've entered everything in as requested let's click sign in and let's see if it actually behaves this time See this is what happens when people attempt to use the old versions of Skype uh, they just get a can't connect to Skype error and it is able to contact Skype servers but they have their servers set up in such a way that if they see you're running an older outdated version of Skype they just won't allow you to connect in an effort to try to get you to upgrade to the newest version so there's a bit of a workaround that I discovered with this it's going to involve using a browser your text editor and that's about it first go ahead and fire up Safari we're going to have to do a quick internet search what we first need to do is find out what the newest release of Skype is now it's going to change depending on when you watch this video but as of the date of this recording which happens to be Monday uh, sometime in March 2015 the latest version is Skype version 7.2.0.103 so what we're going to do is select that version number control C that will copy it into our memory and now what we need to do is control click the Skype installer the Skype program file that's in your applications folder and then you'll click show package contents you'll see a contents folder now if you click that you're going to see an info.plist file go ahead and double click that it's going to ask you which application you want to use to open that up and we're going to set it so that it opens with the text editor essentially uh, the notepad equivalent in Mac and here is that file once it's opened up now there's three things we're going to have to change in this file if we take a look we'll see that it mentions our Skype version number here a total of three times in this file and what we need to do is go down to each and every mention of the version we're running go ahead and select it so what you want to do now is go ahead and command press command V which will paste it into your text file and there are two other mentions now in here there's one all the way down here we also need to replace with the current version so again command V and if we scroll down just a bit more there's one more mention of it that we will also need to replace with the current version number so again command V will replace that with the current version number there are a total of three entries mentioning the version that we're running so what we'll do is go to file save 
we're going to go ahead and close out of text edit now go ahead and quit Skype we probably should have done that ahead of time but I don't think it makes much of a difference and now we'll go back over to applications go back into Skype sign in with our account credentials and if all is working fine we did everything as we should have we'll be able to log into Skype with no problems whatsoever okay let's go ahead and give it the final try now if all is working we'll be able to sign into Skype do note however the first time you do this it is going to take a little while or well, maybe not that long and we're now signed into Skype close all this stuff out and we are now signed into Skype no I don't want to import my address book contacts and just to prove that it does work and can access the servers I'll go ahead and do a few test calls just to demonstrate that it does work completely Six months, 49 here's a regular phone number I'm calling thank you for calling MCI our system indicates you are calling from so regular phone numbers work but how about Skype to Skype user calls so here I am on Skype I'm using another username that I rarely use it's pretty much just a backup account but I'll go ahead and call this from the iBook and see if we get an incoming call alert so there it is I'll go ahead call the Skype number bit of a delay there connecting but it is making the call And just for demonstration's sake, I'll go ahead and talk into the iBook so you can take a listen to it. Check, 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 check one, two. And just to demonstrate that incoming calls work too, I'll go ahead and start the call from here. Remember that old Skype ringtone? Check, check, one, two. Now the only problem I've run into with uh, this hacked way of getting Skype to work on your iBook or any PowerPC based machine is that you can't be called, you can't be invited to a pre-existing group call. So let's say there's a group call going on and somebody wants to add you into the call, it'll ring on their end for a brief second and then act as if you've hung up on them and just drop the call for no reason whatsoever. I'm not quite sure why but the only workaround I've been able to figure out on how to actually have a group call with more than one person is to host the call yourself by going to call start conference call and add everyone you want to call from there and then it will work just fine so you can host a group call and it'll work just fine you just can't be uh, invited to an existing group call it, it won't work for some reason so there you have it a little workaround it took what 10 minutes of time and now we can use one of these otherwise unused iBook G4s. I'm sure plenty of people have these things lying around with no real use for them anymore because they're pretty much too slow to go on the internet these days. But now you could use them with Skype and add one more feature that these computers can still do almost 10 years after their initial release.